Massachusetts State Trooper Michael Proctor has been relieved of duty after the mistrial in the Karen Reed case. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, State Attorney for Palm Beach County, aka the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. I want to thank you all for your likes, your views, your subscriptions. Please keep them coming. We're almost at 50,000. And thank you for your comments. I love reading them, even when you disagree with me. And let's talk about the Karen Reed case. Yes, it was a mistrial. And now we've learned, shortly after the mistrial, that the villain of the case, Michael Proctor, that's the trooper who sent those really awful messages about Karen Reed's appearance, and he showed some bias. He showed that he wanted to protect as a fellow member of the force and the people who lived in that house. And instead, he was the one that the defense blamed for many of the problems in the case, the problems with the poor collection of evidence using red solo cups and leaf blowers and stop and shop bags and allegedly planting evidence and someone who just had it out for Karen Reed in fact, here is a sampling of some of his disturbing messages that he sent from his personal phone before uh, the investigation had even been concluded. She's a whack job. See you. Objection. So don't spell it. You have to. So this, these are your words, Trooper Proctor? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead and say them. Uh, yes, yeah, she's a babe. Weird Fall River accent, though. Said the Alberts beat the out of O'Keefe, left him for dead, and that's why her taillight was cracked. She's gross. Trooper to Chico. Oh, f her. So what could prosecutors have done with Michael Proctor? Well, Proctor was a problem from the beginning. Once you knew that he had these really offensive messages out there, once you knew that his investigation had been flawed, well then, I think... What should have happened is that, number one, prosecutors should have really tried to take the sting out of his testimony. When the prosecution gave their opening statement and when they introduced other witnesses, they should have always kept Proctor in mind to try to alleviate the pain, to try to build a firewall around him, like the prosecutors did in the Michael Cohen uh, testimony against Donald Trump. They knew Michael Cohen had some problems in his background, a felony conviction, for example, a perjury conviction. And so what they did was they owned up to it at the beginning and they built a firewall around Michael Cohen to show that there was enough corroboration that even if they didn't like Michael Cohen, even if they didn't think he was always telling the truth, they had so much to know that, yeah, he's telling the truth now. I think prosecutors could have done a better job at that in the Karen Reed trial. When I say prosecutors, it was one prosecutor. Hats off to Lolly. I know a lot of people were down on him, the prosecutor in the Karen Reed case, but he did that whole thing himself. It's not easy to do. He was up against some real top notch defense lawyers and he uh, competed with them to a draw in this case. And so, yeah, I thought Lolly uh, actually did a lot better than people thought. But to back to what he could have done differently. He could have built that firewall more around Proctor, but it would have been tough anyways because what Proctor said was so inflammatory that it was gonna piss off jurors and uh, some of them reacted like putting their head in their hand and just they could barely look at the guy. But another thing the state could have done would be to divorce themselves from Proctor's testimony by encouraging law enforcement to cut ties with him. And that way, it wouldn't be just Proctor who you depended on for a lot of the evidence to be introduced, but you could also introduce the person who's now the new head of the investigation, the person who took Proctor's place. That could have been helpful. Plus, it also sends a message to the jury that the prosecution is not the same as the law enforcement officers. They're different, and the prosecutor should not be brought down by this one rogue officer. Just because you don't like him doesn't mean you shouldn't like us. We're separate. That's the kind of approach I think the prosecution could have had if Proctor had been relieved of his duties before the trial. But once the trial occurred, you know, you can't do it then. You have to wait till after the trial. But if this had been taken care of before the trial, I think the prosecution could have shown some more independence from Proctor. Instead, they were tied to him. 
especially because Proctor was still in charge of the investigation, was still the guy. Uh, and it wasn't a good look for him, it wasn't a good look for law enforcement, and it wasn't a good look for the prosecution. So that's where it could have been different. Now, as far as what's gonna happen at Proctor next and the reactions to his removal, well, let's take a look at CBS News. They came out with a really good article about it. Proctor has denied all allegations of bias and wrongdoing. According to WBZ TV, I team sources, he has been transferred out of the district attorney's office detective unit and into a field services division in South Boston as a formality. State police said the decision is separate from an ongoing internal investigation into the entire Reed case. Proctor has been placed on leave, which means while he is technically on the force and being paid, he is not allowed to function as a state trooper. He is still technically a trooper until his disciplinary hearing. The hearing could end in one of four ways. He gets his job back. He could be suspended with pay. He could be suspended without pay. He could receive restricted duties. The State Police Union, State Police Association of Massachusetts, issued a statement on Tuesday. It is our understanding that this, this discipline came as a result of the trooper's private text message exchanges that were made public during the trial. We also understand that it has no relationship to salacious allegations of cover-ups, collusion, or conspiracies offered by the defense, they said in a statement. At the same time, we must be clear that we do not condone the language used in text messages presented as evidence during the trial. Uh, this reminds me of the O.J. Simpson case, where you had a detective, Mark Furman, who was also villainized during the trial, and he had made some inflammatory comments himself, reportedly using the N-word, and then when asked about uh, his allegedly planting evidence at the trial, he took the fifth, which just, just, the whole thing was ugly, and it was a sideshow that took away from the clear evidence of O.J.'s guilt. Yes, O.J. was guilty. Sorry to break it to those few of you who still maintain his innocence, that he still... Uh, before his death, was still on the golf course uh, searching for the real killers. Yeah. So uh, the same is true, really, for Proctor, where because he was such a lightning rod, it's distracting, and jurors could have just said, you know what, I, I don't believe anything this guy touches. I don't trust anything he was involved in. I think that it, it it's going to be reasonable doubt just for his existence. Uh, I'm going to have a, a separate video with with uh, Rich Schoenstein about our reactions to the hung jury and what could have been done differently overall. But this video is just about Proctor. And the defense lawyers had quite a say about Proctor after the mistrial and after the prosecution announced they would be retrying Karen Reed. Here's what the lead defense lawyer said. Reed's attorney, Alan Jackson, released this statement late Monday night after Proctor was relieved of duty. Conduct has consequences. D.A. Morrissey backed this misogynist, corrupt cop. Remember what I said about prosecutors being tied to the police unless they cut ties in advance? That's what Jackson's doing here. And two hours after he announced he will pursue a second trial against an innocent woman, Karen Reed, the MSP announced that Michael Proctor, the lead investigator for the Commonwealth, has been relieved of duty because of serious conduct that emerged in testimony at the trial. We look forward to another opportunity to reveal the truth about this unjust prosecution. Good luck. Good luck is, well, of course, a euphemism for F you. But <laughs> that's what happens after uh, this lengthy, exhausting trial. And they're going to have to do it all over again. Whether Alan Jackson will be part of the retrial, we don't know. He's, uh, he's a really good lawyer and doesn't work cheap. So we'll see what happens in the retrial. But in the meantime... Proctor is not going to be part of that same unit, part of this investigation for a while. And as far as whether he is ultimately fired, this is the beginning of a process that could eventually lead to his termination. But it's not one of his immediate uh, consequences. It's suspension at the most with or without pay. So though the Karen Reed case is over for now, it's not really over. Expect civil lawsuits to be filed against Karen Reed, perhaps against law enforcement, but I, I do think that the victim, uh, the victim's family and perhaps friends will file civil lawsuits against some of the individuals involved, perhaps some defamation lawsuits, um, perhaps against the blogger who was at the center of this matter. But 
this thing is far from over uh, and we'll have to wait for the retrial. But until then, you can catch us here at True Crime MTN. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, AK the Florida Lawman. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe, and leave a comment below and share with a friend. And I'll see you next time.